Hey guys, it's Moogle Lord here, and I'm back again with another discussion video. And today I want to talk about a Capcom fighter, well, more so a crossover with Capcom, which is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Now, I know it's been a while since I talked about Marvel vs. Capcom here on my YouTube channel, and I decided I wanted to wait a bit until more information came out with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite in terms of gameplay, characters, and etc. So, we do know that in e at E3 and in upcoming weeks, we'll be getting some more information, more gameplay, characters, there's a story mode and everything so I was gonna wait off until um, E3 but something that caught my interest early this morning around 1 59 a.m. Um, there was a leak um, roster that was uh, pretty much posted here on NeoGAF now the thing is we could take this for a grain of salt, assault is because like I said these are just rumors people always leak things and some some leaks turn out to be not to be true but there's some val validity there's maybe some validity um, with this uh, roster leak is because this is the same individual who had who had um, who had came out and said that Mar that Catcom was going to uh, announce um, a new Marvel's Cat a Catcom game and this person has also leaked um, other Catcom games out out in the past so there could be some validity um, with this individual so some people really do trust this person but like I said before let's take this with a grain of salt so let's go through the roster and I'll give you my opinion what I think about this so this is the Capcom side first as the user said he was given permission or he or she was given permission to share this so on the Capcom side we have author now this is another head scratcher to me well a big head scratcher to me is because author is author really a popular character to even be considered to return in the base roster for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite now to me, in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and, and Ultimate, Arthur wasn't really a fun character to me at all. Um, it, 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 the character was pretty stale to me, and he played too much like his... Uh, which is well, you interpret the character. You want the character to be so be close to their game, to their you know their console game counterpart as much as possible. The, this character played too much like his game instead of an actual fighter to me and I just thought he was awkward to play so this character is, all, is returning back for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and I just don't know why at all then of course we have Chris, Chun-Li and Dante is returning now I'm not surprised at all that Dante is returning Dante is pretty uh, is really really viable in the, com in the co competitive community and he's also a fan favorite as a Capcom character in general so having Dante come back yes I'm, I'm open arms to that as well. Now, I do wonder in DLC will we get the DMC version of Dante as a, as a you know, as a skin for um, Dante. And then we have uh, Firebrand, which is, is another head scratcher because we have another Ghost and Goblin character making another return. Now, Firebrand was in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 if you guys haven't played um, um, the previous um, Marvel vs. Capcom game. Um, Firebrand was also a character um, who had his own spinoff back in NES, uh, SNES era um, with, in the, within the Ghosts and um, Goblins lore. So to see this character return, um, tournament viability, um, he may be viable to like in a competitive scene, but as a fan favorite, like do really pe do people really will want him to return in the base roster for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? Just don't know about that. And then we have an interesting choice here, which is Jetta from Dogstalkers. Now, I'm not really a big Dogstalkers fan, but I was really, really properly introduced to Dogstalkers' character, which was Morgan in the Marvel vs. Capcom franchise. So, ever since that ever happened, it, I had pretty much crew interest to know what other characters come from that fan franchise. And Jetta was one of them. And... Like I said before, never played played any of Dolph Starker's game, but I did play Jetta and Mugen, and and there are so many Marvel's Capcom, um, uh, I guess you say versions of Jetta, gameplay styles of Jetta, and he's very very fun to play in Marvel's Capcom style. So to, to see, um, for me to be able to play him in Mugen and to now see him in Marvel's Capcom in a Marvel's Capcom, Capcom game, I can't wait to see how he plays. And plus. Uh, Marvel's Capcom needs more villains. There's not too many m villains in Mar in a Marvel's Capcom game, especially when you build in a story and a lore down in you know in this franchise. Um, I think it would be nice to have more villains to even the playing field out between the heroes and villains. And then we have Monster Hunter. Now I'm very very shocked to see Monster Hunter um, on this list. Now if you guys don't know, um, back during Marvel's Capcom 3 and Ultimate, um, the the the, uh, the the producer or the, the director 
of Marvel vs. Capcom 3 wanted a Monster Hunter character to be in the game, but the director or the producer or the creators of the Monster Hunter franchise um, said no. They didn't want any of their characters to even pair in Marvel vs. Capcom at all. So to see this character on the list, it could be a little suspect or whatever like that, but it could be some truth to it because we do have Monster Hunter uh, Cross Cross or Monster Hunter XX that's coming out for the Nintendo Switch um, and the Nintendo 3DS. So it could be some validity in that as well. Then we have uh, Morgan, of course, and then Nemesis, another Resident Evil character. Now, of all choices, they could have put Wesker back in here or Jill, but more so Wesker. Wesker was a fan favorite and a competitive uh, uh, favorite in a competitive scene in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. So Wesker should have been in place of Nemesis. Of all characters, why Nemesis? Now, I like Nemesis as a character in the, Marvel, in the uh, Resident Evil franchise, but him being in this game... I was excited for him in Ultima vs. Catcom 3, but at the end of the day, I was kind of disappointed in the character. Um, once I got my hands on the character, but seeing his character return, I don't, I don't, I don't see, I just don't see it. And especially now that we have a story mode, Wesker would have made much more sense. Then we have Ryu, of course, and then Spencer from Bionic Commando. Um, this is an, another head scratcher for me. Uh, Spencer uh, making a return. I don't see him being a fan favorite. Uh, probably a competitive favorite, but a fan favorite? No, I just don't see Spencer. I don't know why he should be in the base roster. Then we have Strider Hero, and then Mega Man X, which everyone was dying, couldn't wait. And to see him um, being revealed um, at, at the announcement um, trailer for Marvel vs. Kingdom Infinite was, uh, was pretty, pre pretty hype. Then we have the Marvel side, and the Marvel side we have Ant-Man, which I expected, because I'm, I'm expecting them to take a lot of characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, of course. So Ant-Man, I can't wait to see how his gameplay will play, what will work out in the game, as far as him turning small or turning big, or would it be his supers or whatever. Then Captain America, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange, and then we have Gamora. Now, I wanted, personally, Gamora to be in the game, because I like her, her current... Um, new, her current um, redesign in the uh, Marvel com comics. She has the armor with the sword and everything like that. So I would love to see. Now we have a female character, uh, which we need some more female characters in, in you know, in Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, this, to have her in the game, and I, I hope that she does have a sword, because I do want to see some more sword or weapon-based characters in, the, in these versus games. So Gamora, I think, was a pretty good choice. Um, then we have Hawkeye, Credible Hawk. Iron Man, you know, your typical Avengers. Um, then Nova, which I'm surprised to make a return. But then again, we do have um, Guardians of the Galaxy. And Marvel, once again, with Marvel vs. Capcom. See, back in the day, the old Marvel vs. Capcom or the versus games were more so pushing um, for, you know, for the fans. The fans who enjoyed these type of fighting games. But now these newer Marvel vs. Capcom games are more like advertisement tools. So... They want to push their comics. They want to push their movies and everything. So to see Nova make an appearance is... I, I'm surprised, but at the same time, I'm not surprised. Then we have Rocket and Groot. And the, the uh, leaker said um, about Rocket and Groot that this is how the character was named to him. That was given to him. And he's not sure if Rocket Raccoon is is with Groot as an assist or um, or a redesign with the character actually called Rocket Groot. Then we have Spider-Man. Then we have Thanos. Um, I'm glad to see my boy Thanos... Um, coming back, hopefully they retool him, make him make his gameplay a bit more different. Because I wasn't really a big fan of his move set in the originals, but I still like them as a character. Then we have Thor, and then then all Ultron. I think Thor, he was a shitty character in Marvel vs. Capcom Three. I didn't, I couldn't stand that character. I really, uh, they really didn't. He was just a big disappointment because I really wanted Thor to be a fun character, but I couldn't stand Thor in that game. So we have Thor, and then we have Ultron. But this is the overall roster for the game. Um, like I said, take it for a grain of salt. Um, my overall opinion about this is, if this is the base roster for the game, I'm very, very disappointed. And I was already um, on the fence once I did see the gameplay, because when I see the gameplay, I noticed that this the game is pretty much reusing a lot of... Um, a lot of old assets from the previous game. And then when they made the announcement that the game was coming out 2017, because this game... The uh, announcement trailer was last year, around like November or December. I believe it's December. Then when they said it was coming out next year in 2017, I said this is kind of fast for their crossover games. Their crossover games take some time, and you know, and it and they're quite in development for some time before you actually get a chance to see some you know gameplays and stuff like that. So I'm I was kind of nervous. You know, that this game's coming out around like September, I believe, and we're getting kind of close. And after I seen the gameplay, some of these games, some of the, you can look and tell by the gameplay, a lot of stuff has been, a lot of these are reused assets, which I'm kind of disappointed in. And 
this is could be the reason why they'd be able to push this game out as fast as they could right now. But I'm really, really nervous because I have a feeling that they're going to give us a bunch of new characters as DLC, which means we will have to pay for a lot of the new characters and the most hype characters that we actually really want in the game. So they give us a subpar, if this, if this is true, give us a, a, us a subpar um, base roster and then make us go spend the extra money to get the characters that we really want to be in the game. And if this is the case, this will be a nail in the coffin as far as trust between the consumers and Capcom with their DLC practices because we could have another Street Fighter Cross Tekken on our hands here as far as DLC is concerned because this is ridiculous if this is the main roster because if you want to sell a game, especially to people who are new to the game and want to, who want to know more about the game, especially for returning um, fans of the game. If you want to sell this game, you want to give us some something more attractive, something more appealing. Give us some older, older classic versus game characters like Cyclops or something like that, which we know to hold the back with the whole licensing with X Men and stuff like that. So they most likely be a DLC. But what I'm saying is, if you have a roster like this, the only new characters that I see on the Capcom side is Jetta and um. X and we have uh, Monster Hunter. That's the only three characters that's in this that's new and appealing, you know, whatever. But it's not enough to get me to go out and purchase the game. And then you look on the, the Marvel side. We have Ant Man, um, we have Captain Marvel, we have Gamora, and yeah, and Ultron. And, yeah, and Ultron. These are these characters right here. Are just these are not just enough to get me to want to like purchase this game like they just sprinkle just a tad bit of new characters in there but this is not enough to warrant a purchase this is pretty much a copy and paste from Marvel's Capcom 3 um alt and ultimate to me and i'm really really disappointed if this is the roster this is one of the weakest most disappointing roster i've ever seen um Capcom has a whole rich library of characters so does marvel which we know marvel's going to pump out dlc from like with, with luke cage probably daredevil jessica jones and punisher and stuff like that from the marvel cinematic universe and their netflix series but as of right now this is this is like the play it safe you know, uh, kind of roster, and we do know that Capcom is hurting financially, so Capcom don't have the money to to um, pump um, resources and you know to go get flat to get flashy and make and you know make new character models and stuff like that. But it's not an excuse. I understand that with Street Fighter Five, um, Sony had invested money into them. The, the, to produce Street Fighter 5, but it seemed like to me like Capcom is trying to recoup some of their losses from Street Fighter 5 by putting out this game to get fans to purchase this game. Um, I just don't see why um, Disney slash Marvel haven't pumped money and financed this game with Capcom. I mean, Capcom, the Marvel is rich right now. Rich, Marvel has a lot of money right now from their movies and, and from their Disney characters and stuff like that. So if the only involvement that they have with Capcom is just getting the characters and advertising the game, uh, giving the Capcom the characters and advertising the game, then I think that's just a disappointment. Marvel should be pumping way more money into this project if they really, really want to get people hyped for this game because this roster is just so disappointing. So let me know what you guys think about this roster. If this roster is true what would you still purchase this game regardless of how lackluster uh and how crappy this roster is uh, or you just decided that there's just a new marvel vs catcom game in general if you guys don't agree with this roster and and won't purchase the game just tell me, you know give me a reason why like give me like tell me what was the poor choices and characters that catcom had and marvel had decided to include in the base roster so that's pretty much it for this video if you like this video make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you have any comments or you have a topic you like for me to discuss make sure you also leave that in the comment section below as well i really really would 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 appreciate that i will also shout you out um for leaving the comment you know leaving a topic for me to discuss with you guys in like later discussion videos so that wraps everything up this is moogan lord and i'm signing off